And there we go. We're on. Camera's on. Audacity's on. What's going on, Roger? Man, I'm just hanging out. <laughs> just hanging out. Well, I appreciate you coming over. I, I know we've rescheduled this thing a couple times, man, and um, I apologize. And I didn't want to do it again today. Not feeling the greatest. I mean, I've got a. I still got my little tourniquet on here from some blood that I have to to shell out today for. Uh, these people know what's going on. I got a little blood condition thing, but anyway. So um, yeah. Yep. Glad sometimes. you finally made it. Yep. It's good to be here. Yeah. yeah. Um, first thing I'm gonna go into because I know when we talked, um, I said to go ahead and come on over, and you could just come over early if you wanted to, and you said you had to wait on your sitter. So married? Not married? I mean, I guess there's a kid involved, right? If there's a sitter coming over. Yeah, yeah. I don't have just a sitter just to watch right. my dog. But uh, yeah, I was married, and. Um, I'm divorced at the time right now. I guess it's been, I lose track. You know, I think it's been three years since I was divorced. Okay. Or maybe three since I was separated, but yeah, yeah I got a seven year old girl. Okay, cool. Just one, one kid. Just one. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she just finished first grade and it's just the whole kid thing's amazing. You know, I don't know. You have a, yeah, I got uh, two, I got two boys. Okay. Yeah. They're older. I mean, one's uh, going to be 26 in a couple of days here, three days, as a matter of fact, and one is uh, 23, going to be 24, so they're they're two years apart, so they're older. I don't have to worry about them too much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That sounds nice, but at the same time, you know, you kind of like to have them around, cause, you know, like um, she goes to her mom's house on the weekends and stuff, and I'm on by the end, by Sunday, I'm always kind of just ready for her to get back home. You know? Right. So she's still in town here, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So it's that right. makes it easy. Yeah. Well, I, I guess that could make it worse, actually, for some people to be in the same town. But, uh, yeah, it makes it easy mostly for <laughs> rearing a child, raising a child. Yeah, for the kid. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, both of mine um, are out west. Uh, one's in Flagstaff, Arizona, and one's out in Reno, Nevada. So it's kind of tough. I wish they were closer, or they wish I was closer. So I, I keep thinking about moving back out west. But as I retired out of Vegas, and that's why they're – kind of in that area because that's where I retired out of the military so oh yeah how was living in Vegas oh I loved it yeah it's fantastic I can't really imagine it seems like a different city like there's nothing really like Vegas no I mean no there's nothing like it I mean it's its own thing for sure it's its own entity but I liked it I had a good time um, we moved there from Alaska so it was different uh, temperate wise you know when we left Alaska it was 50 something degrees yeah uh, in August, um, and then we got to Vegas, and it was like 115 by the time we got there. So the temperature doubled by the time we got to Vegas, and it kind of sucked for a while to acclimate to that. After being six and a half years in Alaska, and yeah. ha- had acclimated to that temperature, and then had to go to Vegas to the dryness and the, the heat and everything. Mm-hmm. So kind of sucked. But we can get this off the table. So one girl. Any dogs, cats? I got a little dog uh, named Bear. She's about nine years old. And uh, I've got a little fish. A uh, beta fish named Sparkles. Which obviously, I didn't name. No? And, uh, <laughs> Come on. I think, I think you probably named it. <laughs> yeah, maybe I did. Um, we've had a lot of fish that died, but they don't really count. Yeah. So, just the one to one, yeah. Okay. But, um, you know, I like dogs. I could probably get a few more dogs. All right. You know, I'm not really a cat. My, my daughter's always wanting a cat, and um, I'm like, when you get old enough to take care of a cat, you because I don't want to deal with a cat. Yeah, I'm not a big cat guy. Because, I mean, they just don't seem to care about you that much. Right, I mean, you say you don't want to deal with a cat, but it's almost it's really, you don't have to deal with a cat. I mean, the cat kind of takes care of themselves for the most part, yeah, and ignores true. the hell out of you, so they do their own thing, but it um, seems like a dog is much more work. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm just picturing um, my dog... Um, not really wanting the cat to be there and just have that whole thing going all the time. Right. And, uh, cause I know the way she is. We had, um, a couple kittens like years ago and she would just, she would not relax for one second. My dog. Yeah. Cause of the cats. She just, one of those dogs that can't, can't sit down with this cat. What kind of dog is it? Uh, I don't know. It's like no one really, Yeah. Not, yeah. Yeah. Every now and then I see a dog that looks just like her walking down the street and I want to stop the owner and ask him, but. You know, she's kind of just uh, like an average of all dogs put together. Okay. Like right in the middle. Yeah. Medium size, brownish, 
Yeah. Just a regular. It's kind of basic. Just dog. a regular. Dog. Yeah, yeah <laughs> your basic, it's a basic model. Dog. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I wish this damn water would stand up. It pisses me off. Publix, what are you doing, man? Yep. These crappy ass bottles. Well, you got spring water. I got purified water. Mine stands up. Really? They're two different waters. <laughs> yeah. They were they were right next to each other in the cooler. Oh well. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know what the difference is either, to be honest. This one stands, I guess. Yeah, that's true. That's the difference at this point. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So we're gonna open a beer real quick. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah. So I didn't really know what to get. I just kind of stopped. I mean, obviously at Publix. And uh, you ever had Bell Ringer? No, never. It's uh, R.J. Rocker's beer. It's, uh, it's called a Double Pale Ale. It's eight percent alcohol. I didn't realize the alcohol content when I picked it up. But um, R.J. Rocker's is out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. I'm going to read this little expert here or excerpt. How he said. <laughs> in uh, 1997, Mark Johnson built a small brew pub in the heart of Spartanburg, South Carolina. Nearly two decades and three locations later, we are still using premium ingredients and time-honored brewing techniques to make genuinely exceptional beer. So that's R.J. Rockers. They've been around quite a while up there in Spartanburg. Mm. Um, this beer that we're drinking, like I said, it's 8% alcohol by volume. It's got uh, 50 IBUs, which is International Bittering Units. Look what an IBU is. It's uh, this robust brew enters the first round swinging with a swift flavor combination of hops and malts. Bell Ringer is truly in a class of its own. Let down your guard and enjoy the bite during the finish. It may just bring your quest for the perfect craft beer to an abrupt end. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty proud of it. So I haven't this had might this. Be the last beer I ever drink. <laughs> no, probably not. I haven't had this in quite a while. I don't even know when the last time. It's, I just saw it on the shelf and I said, oh, I haven't seen that beer in a long time. So didn't bring your quest to an end <clears throat> no i did not but so we're going to try this out i always see it sitting there with the, the boxer guy on there That's yeah you get it so we'll see what we think it's going to be heavy it's heavier than what i really wanted but hmm. what can you do man you got to make sacrifices sometimes yeah there's a little bit left in there So the name, Mindwater, I mean, I'm assuming that is not your real last name. Um, I mean, it depends on what real is, really. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, it's my last, it's a last name. Oh, is it really? Um, but it was like, um, it was just the name of my music project from when I started it back in 07, I think. Okay. And um, at some point, I'm just became Roger Mindwater as well, you know. So now it's like I'm Roger Mindwater, then the music is is Mindwater, and then, or music or whatever else, you know. Right. So the, so originally it wasn't your name, Roger Mindwater. It was the name of the music project. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which means what? I mean, the music project, just your label, or yeah, just every. I mean, I kind of just throw everything under a big lump, like uh, music and drawing and poems and. It's because um, it's all kind of the same to me. It's all expressing the, expressing the same sort of thing. Okay. I just happen to do a lot more music than the other stuff. Right. So um, because on every album I make, I'll I'll make the artwork and I'll you know do all the stuff on it. So yeah, it's kind of like um, it's just a name for all the art. Okay. On it. So you're self-contained. You don't have anybody working with you. I mean, it's just you. Uh, yeah, mostly. I mean, every now and then I'll have. Someone uh, um, play an instrument on a track or two, but um, I like to have it by myself. Or I sometimes I'll people play live with me. Right, you collaborate. Nice. Yeah, it's hard to do everything myself live. But um, I like to, since I'm in other projects too with other people, I like to have my own solo stuff that I can be like really in control and you know exercise those control freak demons and or what just you know get exactly how I want it. And, and maybe have some really weird ideas that people wouldn't um, know what to do with, or and uh, I don't have to worry about it being accepted the same way like a a band with other people. You know, it's just something that's just safe. I can put whatever I want in it. Right. So I like having that. Okay. And you, so it's uh, so you do guitar and I mean just singer songwriter stuff, right? I mean, do you do other instruments too, or is it just all? Yeah. 
I guitar. Mean, it um the albums I'm recording now are are like a full band. Like I play all the instruments and record them. I did have a, a few albums. Um, what year is it now? It doesn't maybe like eight eight or nine years ago, where I was just playing guitar and playing harmonica and doing like the kind of Bob Dylan sort of folk man thing. Okay. At but the same time. I mean, you're not recording those separately? or you're No, I just made a bunch of real simple recordings. Yeah. I was in that. I, I changed a lot, yeah. you know. But you just said you did one album where you did all the musical recruitments. Well, I mean, more than you one. You kind of mix, said, mixed them all separately and then put them together? Mm-hmm. Most of them are like that. Yeah. Um, it's just there's an exception. Like, there's like two or three albums in a row I made with just um, just me singing them with a the guitar. Okay. I just... I felt like being real basic and in the moment, I guess. So these albums, um, you recorded them yourself. I mean, you you, you tracked them yourself. You you did you go to a studio? Did you have somebody help you out with them? Did you press them actually and sell them? Put them out on Spotify, digital. I mean, um, yeah, everything. <laughs> no, I've never had anything like officially, um, you know, on a label with a, on a vinyl or anything. Right. Is that um, even important anymore? I mean, is that no? Luckily, it's not. Yeah. I mean, um, I know, of course, the big guys still do it, right? I mean, they're they're attached to labels. Some of them make their own label. Yeah, I guess at this point. I mean, that's that's all it is. Anyone anyone kind of makes their own label now. But um, I mean, like now, all my stuff's on. Well, the more recent stuff's on Spotify and iTunes and all these places. You know, you can. There's a lot of services you can services you sign up for, and they, it just puts it out everywhere. Right. It's just really easy to do. Yeah, it's kind of like the same thing with this. I, I push everything to Podbean and it feeds it out to everything else. Yeah. Google Play and it's iTunes and everything. It's on stuff I don't even know what it's called. Like weird streaming services <laughs> in somewhere. Yeah. But uh, I mean, in the past, I had like, um, like way in the past when I started, I had mostly just friends on the internet and I would just sell them. I'd be shipping a bunch of albums around or like 20, you know, mm-hmm. just all my friends. And right, so you just had like a, a regular desktop and you just cut your own CDs or what? Yeah, just burned them out, you yeah. know. I made it somehow, like figured out how to make a little case out of whatever and then put the burn CD in there and, you know, and then um, once I played, started playing shows, I'd sell them at the shows too. But, sure. You know, yeah, I still I still do that. It's just I like making the physical thing. Yeah. I mean, but um, these days it's all, I mean, no one even has a CD player. So I'm, right, yeah, I, I don't have one. I'm thinking, um, you know, I, I've been wondering if, you sh- if people should put out uh, music on like zip drives or you know thumb drives, something. I think that would be better. I mean, yeah. I've got CDs sitting here from people that've been in here. You know, Fleming Moore, Paul Stone yeah. projects, and different it. things, and you know, Ron I Daniel. Everybody's giving me CDs. I'm like, I don't have a CD player, man. Mm-hmm. But it's cool. I'll keep yeah. it. I'll hang it up or put it somewhere. I don't know, but yeah. But you know, um, I'm looking at Mike Martin. Um, He's, he has a band that he plays around him. He Sounds has, real familiar. Yeah. yeah he, he does like an Americana kind of thing. or um, Like a fiddle and a banjo. and He's like a real gritty kind of guy. But um, I was talking to him. And he was saying he's going to release his album on a thumb drive. He found some service to you know, order like a hundred of them. Yeah. I remember one. Um, who the hell was it that I went and saw? I want to say it was Kiss that I went and saw. And... Um, at the end of the show, you got a, an actual wristband. It was like a wristband that clicked together, and it was a USB like clasp on the thing. So yeah. you could take the wristband off and just plug it into your computer, and there was all the tracks from the show were actually on this oh, wristband. Oh, it was like a live recording. Yeah, it was like a live recording from the show. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty badass. And then you can go to every show and get all these wristbands. And- right, and I have no idea where the hell I put the thing. I wish I still had it, but that was... Hell, I want to say 2006 or seven or something. It's been a long time, but they were kind of ahead of the game with that as far as I'm concerned. I mean, now yeah. I think that would be phenomenal to go to a show yeah. and just get a band, you know, and something that's functional that you could wear, that you would like to, you know, oh, have, yeah. have as an accessory yeah. anyway. But You could walk then, around with your favorite albums on there. <laughs> <laughs> right. you, know? you get in your car and you just plug it into your USB yeah. drive and you got your music right there on your arm. It's kind of a cool concept. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know where you could go to do that thing, but. Yeah, it's kind of a problem because CDs are good because if you put a CD in someone's hand, like back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, they probably listen to it because that's how you listen to the music. Right. The thing well, is I mean, now, before that, yeah, it was catch cassette. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But now it's like you tell them, oh, i got a Spotify <clears throat> or whatever you have. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. And then they'll forget about it Yeah. because it's not sitting there in front of them. You know, maybe right. some, maybe they'll remember when they're on Facebook or something and they see 
but you know, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, by the time they drive home, they're like, eh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to, to look to, it up to connect them. Yeah. No. So but, what's what's the answer? I don't know. I think maybe just to be really good if you have a good show and just just like play like a show that people are like, wow, I want to listen to that. You know? Yeah. I mean, you got to get something in in the, the people's hands that makes them remember. That they saw you and that they yeah. wanted that they wanted to look you up. So whether that yeah, be maybe like stickers or something. a sticker, a business card, a CD, if you got some burned or a T shirt or something, right? I mean, they gotta have something because, like you said, once they get home, a couple hours has gone by and they're like, "Yeah, oh, I forgot to even look that up." And what was I supposed to do? Oh, yeah, I don't even remember. Yeah. That's a good point. I never thought about that with the stickers and stuff like that. But I mean, yeah, it just reminds them. Something. You know, it, it. Yeah, I do that too because I have like, a <clears> sticker lying around from. Someone I saw and I see it every now and then. And, yeah, you know, yeah, oh, I got, yeah, that man. I got stickers, business cards, all kind of stuff from all the shows that I do that reminds me to go look up other people's work and whatever. But yeah, I think you got to have something at a show. Um, I know Joshua does a good job um, marketing. There's a bunch of guys out there that I know. You know, as soon as they get done with the show, they walk around to everybody at the brew house there. You know, at Homegrown, and they'll hand out business cards to each individual person. You know, hey, thanks for coming out and seeing me. Here's my business card take a look and mm-hmm. it has their website, you know, an email and all that kind of stuff on there. So could be something, but, yeah. you, but there's gotta be a way that you got to bring people to your, to your site somehow. Yeah. It's hard. I don't know. I, that's my, I'd say my biggest weakness is the whole, that last step, you yeah, know, the whole marketing I do it all, thing. you know, and that is not, it's just something I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're in a good, a good place to learn. Cause I mean, there's a ton of people out here trying to learn it too. And some of them got it, going pretty well and some of them are yeah. still learning yeah some guys really know have a, have a good knack for, like Joshua he's good at that yeah you know and uh, I've been playing with Ben somewhere a lot and he's he's a lot better at that because you know, he's doing the stickers and the pins and stuff and yeah I'm, it kind of just clicked when you said that because I was thinking like I mean those are cool but you know it's just a sticker but yeah. you know it's really part of the whole deal it's like uh, you build up uh, a thing if you yeah. have all this memorabilia or whatever you know. right what do you do with Ben um, Can you just play guitar with them, or what? We've been doing this um, new project. I'm gonna have some of this beer. Yeah, that's why we poured it, man. And it's okay. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a a huge fan of it. It's got a little bit maltier backbone than 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 I'd really like. I'd like a little bit more uh, bitterness and hoppiness to it, but but it's good. It doesn't taste like an eight percent beer. I mean, it doesn't have no, that hard yeah. alcohol hit yeah. to it. It's kind of smooth for an eight percent beer. Like that. It's got something uh, a little different. It's, yeah, it's not so hoppy that it's kind of knocking me out. Right. Which is cool. Of course, they always say with over 1.5 pounds of hops. It's like everyone wants to dump a, about half a truckload of hops and everything. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, but um, me and Ben... Are you part of his new project? Is that what you got? Yeah, it's, well, so it's like ours, basically. Well, it's his. It's probably his more. But... um. Because he came to me with I say he is just because that's the first place well, I heard it was. Yeah. Well, he's, like I was saying, he's good with the, the image thing. He's he's good. It's like the pur- Purple Ricky or something? Blue Ricky is our band. I knew it was Blue Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> and he just came to me and he wanted to start something that was just different. And, like, we both like punk rock a lot and more experimental things. And, you know, we we both play in other bands that just weren't really doing that sort of thing. So Right. Blue Ricky. But, uh, yeah, Blue Ricky and we're... Uh, and I just saw something, speaking of that, I mean, you're probably going to bring it up, but... Yeah, right now. <laughs> we just played a show, Der Pot, which is really great. I mean... Was that at Coastal? Yeah, Der okay. Pot. I mean, you got to love Der Pot. Oh, they're fantastic. And, yeah, and, but, you know, so um, that was maybe our second show, and we got another one coming up this Saturday. <clears throat> I think it's a Saturday. It's a June 13th, I believe. It's at the Purple Buffalo, and you got... We're opening for Eldritch Root, who is... Open it for Katie Veltry. So it's a whole bunch of Somerville people. And you said Blue Buffalo? Is that what it's called? Purple Buffalo. We got colors yeah. all over the place. Yeah, Purple, purple <laughs> Buffalo. And is that the one that Noisy Boys is going to be at too? No, that's something else. Okay, that's something that's, else. I mean, yeah, that's, usually I get to all this at the end with, you know, do you want to plug some stuff or whatever, but yeah. <laughs> I'll well write it down right now. Purple Buffalo, June 13th. Okay. Yeah. That one is some kind of, uh, it's Rock for the Rescue, it's something about saving um, That's right. dogs and they're in danger and things. It's the, the 28th. It might be more than one day, actually. It's like 100 bands. Yeah, I think it was a couple day event or something. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll look at it. It's on, I saw it on Instagram, so. Yeah, so. 
Yeah, but uh, we're just um, playing fast, loud music, and I play the drums, and I sing a few songs. He he'll sing about two thirds of the songs, and I'll sing the other other one. We got we got a bassist playing with us. And, okay. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Well, let's go back. So let's go back into 2007. You said right is when you first kind of started doing your thing. Yeah, that's what, that's when I first recorded stuff. Yeah. Okay. So how'd you get into music? I mean, what what are your influences? What are your How'd you get started? What made you say, I want to be a musician? Um, actually, at first, I kind of like uh, denied it all. My whole family is a musical family. Okay. Like my parents are playing music and stuff. And I, and I took piano lessons when I was real small and drum lessons when I was maybe 10 or 12 or something. And I just didn't really, you know, I was just like, that's not my thing. I played soccer a whole bunch. And, um, sometime, I guess I left for college and my dad gave me his guitar, taught me like four chords. And, um, I was kind of messing around with that at college. And I think it was really when I, when I failed out of college, then I really started, um, finding something in the, in the music maybe. Well, I mean, I always loved music. I'm, I'm, I'm talking you about, said you failed out of college? Or you I'm, yeah, I'm talking about playing music <laughs> right now. I mean, I've always listened to a ton of music, but it was really the playing music I'm talking about. Right. Like, um, yeah, I did fail out of college. Yeah. Where was that? Where'd you go to school? Uh, Clemson. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it was just, I just uh, shouldn't have been to college. Yeah. It that's, wasn't that. It was, that's a tough school to be at, too, man. It's a, yeah, it's it a beautiful doing, school. It's a lot, a lot going on. Yeah. A lot then, of distractions, probably. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. And it was like my... Yeah, this problem is like, um, well, it probably doesn't happen now with the way the computers are, but I mean, I went to college in 2004, and that was the first time I ever had a laptop to myself, mm-hmm. which is like, you got you expect a kid to control himself, yeah. and, and of course, you don't really know exactly what you want to do in college, and there's all those other distractions, like I wasn't really drinking until I got to college, and yeah, you know, if I, if I had gone there like two years after I graduated, I would have. Just killed it, man. Right. Yeah. But even the same stuff, you know. I was doing engineering. I could have just done that a little later. Right. But, you know, maybe not, though, because um, the way I'm ended up now is probably more suited to me. I'm more like a... I don't do well working in, like, a big company or anything like that. I like have a, a small... Right. So no plans on probably going back then? Nah. No. My, my grandmother went <laughs> to, of course. Yeah. I mean, that's the yeah. thing. Yeah, the grandparents, of course. Yeah. That's what you did when you when you grew up. You went to college. You went to high school. You went to college. But now, I mean, you got the you got Google. You don't need college. I mean, you got all the information yeah. right at your fingertips. You can do all your own self educating that you need to do. Yeah. If you're motivated enough, I mean, you got to be motivated, yeah. obviously. But I think you can. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially if you want to be like an entrepreneur or something like that, or there's there's just there's a ton of stuff you can do without college. Yeah. Or even any of the the trades like um, you know, I do woodworking and. You could just, I could have just done that after high school. Right. So. And I mean, and, yeah, you can just go to YouTube and type in woodworking education oh, yeah, yeah. or something yeah. and you'll find everything you need to know. Yeah. And you don't go in debt. <laughs> that's the, the biggest big, plus. Yeah. That's the biggest thing, right? Yeah. yeah. You're not paying anybody. Yeah. But I was listening. I mean. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, whenever, we're way off track, but. Yeah. Um, I don't know when, I guess I was always <clears throat> liking music a lot, but it really, you know, when I got to middle school and high school and it was all angsty and all that, you know, it really kind of became like a, a thing I kind of clung on to and it just... Right, kind of, what was that, mid-90s, I guess, or something? Yeah, and it was like Green scene. Day probably. It was Green Day and Beck and and then eventually like a lot of those pop punk bands like No Effects and Bad Religion or whatever. <clears throat> and that that's kind of a thing that, that me and Ben had in common. So we kind of... We both grew up with the same sort of... Uh, Punk influence. <clears throat> so you're in that vein. You're not. You're not as far back as like Black Flag or Only Go Boing oh, or any of these type things. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So those are Ramones some are like, as well. The Ramones. Yeah. Kind of love the Ramones. Right. And um, so that's the style of music that, that Blue Ricky's doing. Yeah. And I if mean, you were to pin it on one, we cover band, a Ramones I mean, song. And I mean, we also sort of sound like the Descendants, or but we're yeah we're. Slightly poppy and a little bit of tongue and cheek. Okay. But um, but we do. I mean, we're not all like. We have some pretty just heavy, noisy songs, like you know. Right. 
What other projects? You got? I mean, you got your own stuff, the Roger Mindwater stuff. Which what would you classify that stuff as? Um, or, or would you classify it even? Well, right, it just changes a lot. Right now, it's more of like a folk rock thing, I guess. Like when I started making them in 2007, I would I'd be making 10, 15 long, 10, 15 minute long, like uh, instrumental, so ambient type song, like just psychedelic songs or whatever. Right. And um, which is kind of the vein, kind of what I I feel. You know, I've watched a couple of your videos, and they're kind of psychedelic, kind of yeah, kind of instrumental. Actually, lately I've been kind of bringing it all back together. Like I had that folk period I mentioned where I was just playing a guitar only. And then the early, early stuff was just the psychedelic instrumental. And now I'm kind of combining it all, you know. I don't know why, but it's just kind of, you know. And then... <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's just an evolution. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, but I'm not really sure how to classify it. Especially now, I kind of like I've been recording a lot of new stuff. Um, and it's just a big mix. I yeah. think I'm just going to put out... Like a giant grab bag type uh, project. Well, I mean, that's what I was going to say. Is you know, do you have to classify it? But I guess in some sense, you do have to classify, right? Because everything is listed by classification, so you got to kind of yeah. put yourself in a certain box to, for, for people problem. to find you. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that's part of my problem because I hate I like I hate doing it, but yeah. So yeah. whatever, folk rock. Yeah, <laughs> that'll work. I mean, that's probably a good good spot to be in. That's probably a pretty popular spot. Yeah. I would think. And people like that. They're like, "Oh yeah, I want to hear some folk rock." I think. Right. And but then, but then, but then the other thing I think of, I guess, is how saturated is the folk rock scene on Spotify or whatever. How yeah. many other artists are in that genre that are going to drown you out, possibly? But yeah, maybe I should be in like the um, like Indian jujitsu uh, <laughs> right. genre or something. Yeah, something weird. I'd be like the only guy. Right. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I have no idea. I just kind of. Try to make things the best I can, and um, I'm constantly just looking out to see how other people um, do it, with, especially with the marketing, because I'm real clueless on that. Right. I can make stuff fine, but yeah, I'm always watching other people, because I think they know better than me. Right, and hopefully, you know, there's something that you're doing that they're looking at you for, too. I mean, hopefully it's reciprocal, and um, you've got something going on that somebody else is looking at. Oh, I was trying to get in a yeah. different position, but that, <laughs> that didn't work too well. Um. So okay, so you got the mind water stuff. Oh yeah. You got the blue Ricky. What else is going on? Um, I'm in the band. I've been in the band for I um, might be like eight years by or eleven years by now. With a uh, Chris Bauer. I don't know if you know Chris Bauer. He's yeah, on, he's played a couple times at Homegrown. Yeah, he plays there. Um, yeah, he does a lot of solo stuff. He's always playing around and um. I think the last time you played, he he sat in and played a couple songs. Yeah, he? he did. Yeah. So I mean, we've known each other for I guess it's about eleven, uh, twelve years, and we're just we've just been good friends for a long time. And we have a band called Campfield. Okay. And we just um, just the two of you, or is there a drummer, bassist? It's kind of it's Camp? like just, it's mostly just the two of us. Campfield. Yes, Campfield. It's actually a, a town in South Carolina. Okay. And we just pointed to the map, and uh, there it was. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like a well, it's like a one intersection down or yeah. something. Um, actually, on the um, we just recorded the EP, and um, John Bobbin mastered it. Right? It was a um, great guy. Yeah, I met him a couple times. He does a lot of stuff with Joshua, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, he's uh, yeah he's really good. He's like a wizard with uh, recording stuff. Right. But um, on the back of the the um, artwork or whatever is um, a Google Maps image of. This town can't feel. It's just like a gas station, and <laughs> you, you don't know what it is if you look at it. But, right. But anyway, we um, it's like it's a strange band because it's really just the two of us, and we both write songs, and so we'll I mean come, that was we'll a big thing for a long time. We'll I mean, support, Captain and Tennille and yeah, or Simon Beatles. Garfunkel. We're pretty much just yeah. like the Beatles, like just as good as the Beatles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> maybe a little better, right. but um, I don't know. They're pretty bad right now. Um. So I think we passed them. Right. Um, but um, we play drums for each other. Like I'll get up and sing. We kind of, we have like a real, a show with a lot of movement and changing. Like um, he'll play some songs on the piano. I'll play some songs on the guitar and he'll play some guitar. And then we'll board drumming for each other. And then we'll have a lot of guests. And um, we have some people who play with us. 
for longer than others. Like we have a bassist who has had a couple long stints with us, like six months at a time. But everyone seems to kind of come and go. We have a violinist sometimes, and a percussionist, or you know, rhythm guitar. Just some people come and go. Yeah, I'm trying to make every show really unique, and um, it's um, we just want to kind of have like a real relaxed um, that anyone can just come and play. And now, do you prefer can, that? I mean, do you prefer playing just solo by yourself, or do you like when people sit in and you kind of do um, some funky stuff like that, or is it different? I like to have it all because. I think if I only had the like uh, solo stuff, I'd be missing stuff. You know, you have to have both. Right. But um. But, I mean, you gotta have a favorite though, right? Yeah. I guess I like my solo the best. Okay. Because I'm the one, but um, this is more personal. Yeah. Um, but um, I was gonna say something that I forgot otherwise. But um, yeah, we just try to uh, mix it up a whole bunch, and it's kind of just a community kind of thing. Like, there's no leader of the band, and uh, yeah. Yeah. It probably helps with, uh, you know, having riffs or stuff within the band, right? I mean, everybody just kind of does everything. There's, there's yeah, not like a lead do, singer that's got this ego. and Yeah, it, it, it does create a good uh, community feeling. And I mean, we could help other people come play their songs. If we have a guest who has some songs, we'll just back them up. Right. And we'll just have two songs in the middle of our set by some other guy. Yeah. So it's fun. And we just, um, we are playing a show... Campfield's playing a show at the, what's it called? The Top Dog Tavern. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> Top Dog. That's off of Dorchester down there, right? Yeah, what day is it? I'd have to look at the calendar. Top Dog Tavern. So that's Campfield. Yes, uh, Chris Bauer and me, our project there. I believe it's the 22nd. Of June? Yeah, at the Top Dog. Cool. So you got a lot of stuff going on, man. So <clears throat> with all that said, do you have a day job? Or is this what kind of yeah. what you do? No, I don't make any money playing music. No. It's all online. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like five bucks a month or whatever. Right. Or, you know, but if I, I guess if I play somewhere, this was a little bit, but uh, I don't really, I don't really think about it with the money. I, um, I'm, a, I'm like a con- carpenter, contractor guy. Okay. And so I do a lot of woodworking and repairs and things like that. Right. How'd you get into that? Um, I, I don't really know. I, there was just at some point in my life I I decided I wanted to work with wood. And I happened to have a, my family had a friend who was working in a cabinet shop out in Cottageville. And he just kind of took me in and taught me. I didn't know anything at all. And um, he taught me everything about making the cabinets and I mean, he was a really good teacher. He, because you could tell he he loved the 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 craft, right. you know. And he kind of showed me that you, know, you cut this wood and it smells <clears throat> this way, and you know, there's just the grains real nice. And, right, it's kind of like an apprenticeship. Yeah, it, yeah, that's exactly what it was. And um, yeah, so um, he just he was a real good teacher. And then, but then eventually, he left uh, the shop, did his own thing, and then I was just there. You know, I was running the shop. Um, I mean, there's an owner. But he wasn't really there. So I was building all these custom kitchens and furniture and things. and You know, a lot of high-end houses downtown and on the Battery or whatever or in Mount Pleasant. And so I learned a lot about that. But eventually, I just couldn't work for that guy anymore. Yeah. You know, just um, some guys, you just... Once you, once you um, get to the point where you can't respect them, right? it's hard to work for someone like that. Yeah. So um, I got this job I'm doing now. It's just like a family, another family friend, but um, yeah, it's just me and him, and we ride around the truck and just either fix stuff or build stuff, yeah. so all sorts of things. Any music while you do it? Can you take take a little break and jam uh, out a little bit? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean I'll stop and like write a poem or something. That's um, a lot of stuff gets done at work. Those mm-hmm. little like spaces when you know, stop, but um. <clears throat> Yeah, that's what the greatest thing about the iPhone. Or I'll get a musical idea. Like uh, when these smartphones came out, they have a little microphone. I don't know how many songs I've, I've gotten because I I like hummed or sang like two seconds into my phone. Okay. And then like three months later, I'm like, oh, yeah. And then, you know, it's a song. Yeah, just on the voice recorder. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. to get the idea down. Yeah, which I guess is not a new idea. I mean, you just carry around a little tape, mini 
cassette players, you know, and yeah, the same I thing, so. record an idea, whatever. Um, or, or else you wrote it down in a book. Like Caleb is huge on his little notebook. I mean, he writes down just any and every idea that comes through his head, he writes down in yeah. a notebook. So he's old school with it. But Yeah, I, re- I just use the notes <clears throat> on my phone like a... Yeah, that's all. That's what I use. Century. But I mean, he actually down. writes it down, you know, in a book on paper. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I use the notes in my phone is what I do. But so, if you were to, to choose uh, that, you know, the apprenticeship, the the woodworking, the carpentry, whatever, over music, which one would which one um, would you rather do for the rest of your life? I would rather make music and um, make art, but. Um, uh, it's tr- it's tricky when you have a a child to support. You know, if I was by myself, maybe I would just live in a van or yeah. But uh, you know, I'm not saying like a bad thing. It's just reality of it. And but there is some. I mean, it's kind of nice also to be like in the rest of the world too and have no pressure on the music because I don't have to worry about it. Um, right. Making money or anything, I can just right. So it's not forced, maybe right. I yeah, mean, it's, 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 it's a little more free. natural. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, of course, yeah, I'd like to, it would be nice to just only play music. And sure. Maybe, maybe I mean, I knew the answer. I think I knew the answer yeah. to that, but. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm also trying to, I'm starting to, I want to make my own business with the wood stuff too. So I, that would kind of uh, be in this like similar vein, I think, because I'd, I'd like to work for myself. Right. Like a musician can work for himself. <clears throat> so I'd like to. But, you, but in. So in that aspect, you you wouldn't want to be like doing houses and stuff like you're doing now. I mean, you're talking like doing yeah. stuff out of your house, yeah. Making you know woodwork stuff like that or something. I don't know in the mm-hmm. background. Yeah, someone's like, I want to build a, I want that thing, and right. Can you build it for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. So I, could, I mean, making a guitar would be cool, but yeah. Do you have a lot of your own equipment, or is it still just company stuff that you're using? I mean, do you have stuff yeah. where you could start a play a business out of your own own house? Yeah, mostly I got about. Uh, I think about ninety percent of the stuff now I use is uh, mine. Yeah. I've been acquiring it over the past couple of years. Right. And um, I'm like very in the very infant stages of actually starting. Like I'm, I'm building stuff for a couple of friends right now. So I'm trying to get a website together. Yeah. Do you have a website now? I mean, for Mine Water or anything? Um, Blue Ricky, any of that stuff? We got Facebooks. Just and the um, social between media. the Facebook and the streaming, <clears throat> you know, I got a band camp for Mine Water, but. I don't know how much people use Bandcamp anymore. I don't even know what it is. So. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I got the SoundCloud, but I don't know. It, uh, I guess it seems like between the streaming and the Facebook and Instagram, that's, that's enough. Right. We had a, a, a website for this thing, for Craft Conversations, and once I took it over myself, I said, I'm not paying anymore for that website. Yeah. It's just, I don't. I didn't feel yeah. like I needed it. Remember it was kind bands, of repetitive. Remember when bands used to have websites? Yeah, you go to like the band website dot com, yeah, right. and then they'd be like, "Oh, these are all our tour dates, or these are you can buy the albums." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of ridiculous now. Yeah. I mean, I, I could see a use for a website, but for this type of stuff, for music, I don't think you need it anymore. Yeah. I mean, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those things are yeah. plenty. Yeah, I mean, it's too much. Of you. I can't. I got the Instagram going recently, but I it's it's hard for me to do both. You know. Even if it is posting the same thing on, on two things. Right, yeah. The great thing about Instagram is that you post something on Instagram and you can make it post that it's same exact post to Facebook for you. So it does oh. two in one. Yeah. Well, Facebook doesn't go the other way, maybe. That's I don't my, think it goes the other way. That's my problem. I'm going backwards. Yeah. I need to flip my life around a little bit. All right. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, I'm not a big social media guru or anything but instagram does limit you to that uh, you know one minute video or whatever too so that yeah. makes a difference where you can put a an hour video on facebook if you wanted to but yeah and no one watch it yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah but yeah they work well together and i think i guess they're owned by probably the same people i would assume but who, mm-hmm. who knows it's yeah. all one big I don't know. conglomerate with google and facebook yeah, and visa probably owns it all yeah probably i don't know um yeah it's it's weird that um how the internet has changed into just like four or five big websites you know it used to be so decentralized yeah like when i was when i was a kid that's when the internet was really getting bigger <clears throat> right and it was like the wild west kind of and i've just kind of slowly seen it just get more and more like like everyone's in the same spot they're all on facebook or instagram or whatever it's weird yeah for sure and there's a few few guys that keep coming along trying to change the game, and they just get yeah. sucked up, man. 
yeah, and more bought and more. out or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, it's, 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 it's almost all, a monopoly, really. It's all Google. Like you used to be like, what's your favorite web uh, search? You know, I, I like Alta Vista. <coughs> yeah, you had yeah Yahoo and Google and AOL. Yeah, and, there's a uh, bunch of different Bing web and, crawler. Yeah, just all these different web searches. Or Jeeves or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now, yeah. <laughs> now it's just like Google. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Nobody uses anything else. It's weird. Yeah. I'm still on, you know, uh, PC. A lot of people are on Macs, but uh, this thing keeps trying to get me to go back to Bing and all that kind of stuff. And oh, I'm, yeah. You know, come on, man. Get with the game. I was telling my son the other day, my oldest son, that I think Google's the Skynet. I think that's what it is, really. But Yeah, I mean, um, I heard something somewhere that, you know, those, um, instead of the captchas they have where you identify the street lights and the stop signs. and uh, there I was hate a, those things. Yeah, they're... They kind of make me nervous. I worry if I'm going to get it wrong. I'm like, is that really as light? Does that count as being yeah. just the pole? Or, um, but there was like, uh, doing research for Google's AI cars, mm-hmm. like the self-driving cars. Yeah. And yeah, and like that, how the Google Maps is just a way to, you know, know where everyone is, right. basically, because. When you get on your phone and you go into Google Maps, they know where you are. <coughs> yeah, once you turn his location services yeah. on, man. They're all just collect- it's collecting a bunch of information on you or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you see it in all these movies, man. They find everybody. <laughs> they, yeah. they know where everybody is. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so I know you mentioned poems a couple times. We'll get you started in the poems. Um... I think... I mean, I guess that goes hand in hand with songwriting, right? I mean, yeah. a, a song is a poem, essentially, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah, sort of, yeah. I mean, and I also... But I used to write songs with no words. So, um... I think, if I if I can remember, it was... Um, when I used to be on the internet all day and had, like, friends on the internet on message boards and things, like forums. And, um... I remember there being, like, a poetry, uh... thread, you know, like a topic. People would just post their poems in it. And I would just post, like, jokes. Like, joke poems. Right. Try to be funny with them or something. And for some reason, that was just... That was, like, the first time I remember, really, right, trying to write poems. And just kind of kept doing that. And um, So this is new... Th- I mean, how long? I mean, a couple of years now? Oh, that was... That was probably, like, 12, 13 years ago. Okay. I wasn't really heavy <clears throat> writing poems for a while. I don't know. I, I guess I had the journals and... I kind of like. Um, it's about the same time you started music in general. I mean, two thousand seven yeah, or so. Yeah, it was all about the same time, and uh, I just didn't really put it all together uh, right away. Right. You know, I'd have journals and stuff, and write a bunch, and and they sometimes I kind of write like poemy kind of things, like not really just straightforward. And um, I don't know. I think honestly, I think a lot of my ex-wife uh, helped me uh, really write a bunch of poems because yeah. she was really into that and. I wrote just a shit ton of poems whenever I was married with her. And, um, and now they're a little more angry, angsty. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, no, they were for a while there, though. Yeah. Near the end of the whole marriage. They were, man, I go back and read them and, oh, shit. Yeah, a lot of pain. They were, yeah, they're messed up. But um, now they're a lot more focused and calm type poems. And I'm a lot more free. Okay. How long were you married? Five years. Okay. Good good amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, I was married 20. A little over 20. That's a good amount of time. Yeah, that's a good amount of time as well. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we got married like real quick. It was just... Oh, yeah. Us us as well. Let's just do it. Bam. Yeah, Yeah, we eloped. Eloped? Wow. Yeah. yeah. But it lasted for a long time. But How old were you? Uh, we were both, uh, 19. Yeah. I was right when I joined the military. So we, we were both in the air force together and stationed, uh, we were doing our training together and we just ended up falling in love and said, ah, screw it. Let's get married. So we knew each other, knew each other for about a month and it lasted uh, over 20 years. Oh, you beat me. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. We were four months and then, um, yeah. We, um, so you were just, you got married and then you're in the service together, married. Yeah. Yeah. We just got Station everywhere together, yeah, for 20, 20 something years. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good deal. Yeah. Got a couple great kids, so it yeah. all works out. Yeah, yeah, the kids are good. You lived in Seattle for a bit, I heard. Portland. Portland, Oregon. Close enough, yeah. Okay, yeah, I heard Seattle. So what were you doing out there? 
Are you from here originally, from Somerville? Yeah, or? well, I mean, I was born in Indiana, but I moved down the... Or my family moved to Goose Creek when I was three, and I lived in just about everywhere around the Charleston, you know, North Charleston, Charleston, Somerville. Right. But I grew up mostly in Somerville, I'd say. Okay. And um, I moved out there. <clears throat> I was like 23, maybe, or four, and I was just going to try to... That was on your own, then? Yeah, I just packed everything I got in the car and drove across the country, and... You know, stopped at the three friends' house on the way, and I was gonna just try to play music and see what happened, see if I could make a living doing that. You know, even if I was living in my car or something, right? Or just like at Portland, you could probably <clears throat> just busk and make it enough to eat every day. Yeah, probably. There's, right. I, don't know I mean, like Vegas know. or anything else. I mean, you could probably yeah, make Vegas a small is probably change. pretty good like that too. Like certain places, there's just enough of a of a busker culture where. You can you can do it like Charleston. It's it's hard because they they really crack down on people doing that. Yeah, that's what we're trying to. I uh, say we fl- Fleming, you know, f- Fleming for mayor. There, we're trying to, yeah, to work on the busking stuff here in Somerville. But uh, let there be shade. One, I thought that's the, what it said. <laughs> it's one of the agendas is uh, free busking. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. I mean, I think um, a tourist would be happy to see a busker. Because yeah. that isn't the main thing. They don't want to have <clears throat> right. I mean, there's kind of a distinction, though, right? You got to be, you got to have a distinction between a panhandler and a, and a busker. I mean, there's two different things. Somebody just begging for money versus somebody just showing you an art and saying, "Hey, yeah. if you like it, give me something." You know, mm-hmm. I think there's a, a big difference between oh, the yeah. two. But I think people get them confused. And yes. they think this guy's panhandling when you might have your own day job. You're just out trying to play music and yeah, and and inspire some people, you know. But they think you're some kind of bum, uh, just begging for money type mm-hmm. thing. So I think there's got to be a There's a blurry line because I mean, like I was talking about just playing. Just tr- maybe I was going to go out and play. Like I would have been basically a bum, <laughs> right? But I'd play music. And there's right. pe- definitely people who are just like raggedy ass, just. Right, but you're providing a service. You're not yeah, just having a hand out. Like, hey, man. Yeah, give me some money, man. Yeah. You don't need a sandwich. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. It's different, for yeah. sure. But, um, well, that's when I ended up meeting my wife, so I didn't... Uh, I oh, didn't, in Portland? Yeah, I didn't end up uh, going down that music thing. So, on the way over there, did, did you stop and play at certain places? Did you stop in um, bars? I did once. Um, I had a friend's... Um, a new guy in Sacramento who um, had a house that would uh, have a lot of house shows and... He just organized one where he was playing and I played and some someone else played, I guess. Yeah, so that was fun. Yeah. I think just that one. But um yeah, you know. I like I really like Portland. It was great. Oh, I've heard phenomenal things. I mean there's a whole show about it, at least obviously. But uh, Yeah. <laughs> I recognize some of the spots in there too, you know? Yeah. Like that's oh, what yeah, I've heard. That, it's, that grocery store or whatever. Yeah, it's like real legit. It's kind of a TV show, right? I mean it's Yeah. I mean they exaggerate of course, but yeah. It's pretty accurate like some of the just it's over the top right the way they are obsessed with being a certain way yeah like it really is this obsession like they when i was there i don't know if it's exactly the same they were everyone was obsessed with being weird like they would say like there was a bar, even a bar called weird bar mm-hmm. and it's just like if you think about it too much you're not weird you know, you kind of just got to let the weird flow or whatever. You know? Yeah. But people are just like really trying to be weird. Right. You can't try to be weird, right? I mean, weird is just weird. Yeah. Yeah. But there's definitely some people not trying and they're weird. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You don't, you don't try. You're just weird. Yeah. yeah. That's why it was cool. There's a lot of creative energy out there. Yeah. Um, so how long did you stay out there? I mean, long year. enough to meet your wife. Yeah, your about ex-wife. a year. And then um, we moved back here because we were going to have a kid and my family's here and I had a job, a better job here, everything. I, mean, I was working in like a graveyard shift at a pancake house in Portland. And yeah, so that was a bad job. Yeah. But it was an interesting job. It's oh, like I'm a, sure you see some interesting Oh, folks. man. I could probably like write a book on just that, those few months working at that job. Do, do it. Write a book. Yeah. When I'm like 70, maybe. Have you ever written a book? I don't have that kind of stamina. Yeah. I've gotten... Um, I've gotten like uh, 30 pages into it, something, but I'm just better in the short burst. That's why I say maybe when I'm older, maybe yeah. I'll just be able to kind of stretch out more and right for more time. Well, I mean, you don't have to write like a novel or a novella even, but I mean, just to, to take, you know, all your poems and stuff and you can put those into a book and make a book. Out oh, of, yeah. You know. I'm actually doing that right now. Yeah. Um, I know a guy who lives behind me 
who was like um, head of the English department at Pinewood Prep, mm-hmm. and he is like he's a poet too. Um, and he's got some poetry books. BJ Ruddy, he's got poetry books, and he's pretty good. And but he, um, since he's an English teacher, he's good at editing things. And I, right. I gave him. It was actually all those poems I put on Facebook. I, I ended up with fifty of them. So and I wrote them all in like fifty-five ish days or so, like almost one a day, and. I gave those all to him. Right now, he's editing them, giving me some notes, and kind of trying to work it out. And they have a little book. Yeah. So, yeah, I've never done that before. Well, actually, I've never done that like that before. But I did have one album where I made it. It was like a. What do you call it? What did I call it? I called it a chat book. It was like a it had drawings, it had poems, and had a CD. It was all kind of one agglomeration. Yeah. But it was like 12 pages. So it wasn't a big thing. Yeah, but that sounds cool, though. I don't think I've seen anybody do something like that. They would put all those things together in a, you know, in one thing. Yeah, I don't know if I've, <laughs> I've seen it. I mean, I made one of those because there was a while when, when I was married and writing a lot of poems and stuff, we were... Um, me and my wife are uh, in this kind of online community on Tumblr. I mean, you know Tumblr? I've never been it's on It's kind of like a hellhole of the internet. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Unless you're like a, like a... I thought that was Facebook. Like a, a social justice warrior or something. Yeah. Then, then you probably love Tumblr. But um, they have a great poetry community, though, because of all these weird-ass people. And um, But the, these people be making what they call chat books, which is like they just self-produce a... A short little poetry book, maybe some drawings in it. Right. So I just had I took that <clears> idea <throat> and just combined it with what I was already doing anyway with the music. Okay. So it's um, yeah. I mean, even take it a step further without putting the CD in there. Just have it. Uh, you know, you got a book. <laughs> maybe have, have a little <laughs> thing that pulls off the side and it's, like I said, Spotify. a USB a USB <laughs> thing. You know that or just a URL that just pulls off the side of it and you just got this little USB. You plug yeah. it in. Plug you your book. What? Plug your book in. I should do another one of those. That was fun. It was a hell of a lot of work to make that book, though. Yeah. I've written one. I was going to do three. I had three planned, and even a fourth one I had planned, but um, I used a site called lulu.com. It's a self-publishing site, oh. and you can uh, upload your works, and it'll it'll print. It's like a print-on-demand thing, so you don't have to order 5,000 copies of your book and have them in your house, and you try and sell them. And <laughs> yeah, you're like them, sitting you know, on them and stuff. Yeah, furniture. people just go on, and just like Amazon or... Audible or any of those places, they just go on an order and it's just print on demand, you know. Or you oh, can get yeah. an ebook. They, you know, get an ebook and just read it online if you want to now. But, but at the time, it was all print on demand. So if somebody went in and ordered one of my books, it just got shipped to them. You know, what so kind of cool. books are those? Uh, it was memoirs. So I was I was writing stories about my life and uh, life being married and uh, being in the Air Force. So I had uh, about three different books that I wanted to write that covered the entire span of my 20 years in the military and marriage. It was more of a relationship book is what it was, but it was a memoir. So, I mean, it was true stories. Um, so I, I got one book in and it's a lot of work, man. I mean, you talk about, you know, just putting together 12 poems or whatever. I mean, this yeah. was, you know, 5,000 words or whatever. I mean, it's, Oh yeah. I can't imagine it's a ed- lot of work. editing in that. Yeah. It took me, hell, I don't know four years probably to write it yeah do it, you know and then go through just a personal friend that was happened to be fairly good at english that you know taught me a lot about editing and uh word structure and sentences and just whatever i don't know yeah it's still horrible when i go back and read it now I'm like man it, it could be so much better and it's on like its fourth version already just from edits that i've done you know and tried to recorrect oh. some things but but it's out there some people <clears throat> have it yeah, it's still out there. Yeah, yeah, you can't be that bad, I'm sure. Yeah, um, but I was gonna write. I was gonna write two more books to piggyback off of that one, and then I had another whole other subject that I was gonna write on for a fourth book. But it's just it's a lot of work. Yeah, it's very time consuming. So you, I could probably do it even better now because I'm single. But at the time, I was married, trying to write a book, and had raised two kids at the same time, oh, yeah. two yeah. dogs. I mean, working full time. It was. Yeah. Just, you know, I know it for an hour at night. You sit down there, and I wrote it all in, in books like this, and then I would transcribe it into yeah. a computer. But, um, yeah, I've gotten really good at um, using my time well. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know. But it was very rewarding. I loved it. I, I, it, it. It helped me get a lot off my chest and a lot of thoughts out on paper. And um, like I said, it was more of a relationship book um, of what uh, you, sh- you should and shouldn't do in a marriage to, to try and yeah make it work, you know, or make it not work. But Do you have the interest in like um, writing stuff, uh, what's it called, fiction? I've never really had no. I've always I've always been more interested in in real life. I mean, yeah. kind of like this podcast. Real I mean, grounded guy. Yeah. Um, I don't think I can make stuff up really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess it takes a certain a certain per- person. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I'm better at just remembering stuff that I already know and putting it down on paper and just uh, you know nonfiction stuff. But yeah, I mean, I love not. I I'm always seen reading like one nonfiction and one fiction book. Yeah. So, you know. I went through one little period back when I was in uh, my first, uh, I went through ninth grade twice. Uh, but my first year in ninth grade, I went through a, a real heavy poetry phase where, I mean, that's probably why I failed ninth grade, because I was more interested in, in writing poetry than I was going oh, to class right. and paying attention. So, yeah, I wrote a lot of poetry and I couldn't tell you where it is now. It, I don't, I don't yeah. think I have any of it anywhere, but. Ninth grade poetry is probably pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, my English teacher um, liked it a lot. Actually, Uh-oh. she tried. Well, to, she tried to get me to do more of it, and I think maybe it was just trying to get me more interested in school yeah. and, and writing, and trying to give me a direction to go, and trying to keep me engaged. But um, so who knows? She could have been lying to me. It could have been crap. But but she thought yeah. it was pretty good. Oh, it was. Yeah, I just know I wrote some real bad stuff, like some of the early. <laughs> It's a bad but I mean, book. who decides that though? Who decides whether it's good or bad? Um, yeah, I guess so. Um, I guess it's just more like unrefined, you know. I, I've, if I look back at old stuff, I can see that like I was trying, I had the right ideas, and like I, whatever I was writing about was like a, was worth it. Mm-hmm. But just the execution and the it's just rough, you know. Right. So I guess it's just over the time, just refine the process more. Yeah. All right, so we've talked about carpentry, we've talked about uh, woodworking, poetry, music. What are your other hobbies? Do you have anything else that you get involved in? Mm. Or is that pretty much your life at this point? And, and of course, a seven-year-old daughter. Seven-year-old? Yeah. Seven, yeah. yeah. Um, and you have any I, other hobbies, passions, you know, kayaking, fishing, snowboarding, I mean, any of these type things? Um, yeah, well, I mean, meditation is a big part of my life. I don't know what you would call that like I'm not religious or anything like that yeah that was one of the, but, um, one of the things I was going to ask you I mean, it kind of kind of felt like maybe and I know Ben you know Benjamin um, was more Buddhist I guess but I didn't know what your yeah. leaning was it seemed like it was kind of more of a Taoist or a Buddhist or yeah I mean at one point I would have called myself a Buddhist but only in like very like um, I mean even the tattoo you got going on your arm here kind of yeah I got some knows. of that it's um that's just um I, it's only because I felt the chakras in meditating. It's not because I read stuff really that teaches me about them. Mm-hmm. Like my, I just I don't really have any. I don't know. Like I'm, I'm very interested in like how the world works and that religious kind of side of things. But I don't have anything I follow. And like back when I would have called myself <clears throat> a Buddhist, maybe it would have been like a Zen Buddhist, which is basically. Uh, you just kind of learn about the world through like the direct contact with it instead of reading a bunch of things. You know, you just, uh, you can't really learn anything except just in the present moment and being aware of what's going on around you. Right. Because otherwise you're just, like if you read a book, it's not really what's happening. It's Right, you learn life by observe, observing yeah, life. exactly. Right. So, I mean, that's as far as I would go to call myself any sort of anything. Okay. But, um, yeah, like meditation has been maybe the, the most important like thing that helped me out in my life to get over uh stuff you know yeah like not just my failed marriage or something like that but like <clears> anxiety <throat> and i used to be like the most horribly shy anxious uh person you know but um yeah meditation is really it just allowed me to be a, a lot more comfortable with who i am and to be able to to deal with people better and and like not take any bullshit or 
it's just, I don't know, just in almost every aspect of my life. Yeah. Just being motivated and getting things done. Right. Just keeps you centered. Yeah. It's, yeah, it keeps me like uh, in touch with myself, really. Right. Did you grow up a different religion? I mean, or not a different, yeah. I guess you don't have it really religion, but I mean, did you grow up like Baptist or whatever? Around yeah, here? my family is a, like really uh, into the Christian stuff, Protestant. Uh, I guess they're all um, Anglicans at this point. Right. But, um, so I was raised in the church, and there was maybe one year there where I was like really about it. But by the end of high school, I was, I was out. Right. And, um, I mean, was that just because of your own thoughts or because of influences of other people, you know, within high school or, I mean. Yeah, I mean, there's, it was mostly my thoughts. I mean, there was one girl, we were both kind of in it together, like, yeah, this church sucks, you know, and her, she was doing the same sort of thing. Right. But, but I mean, it was really just because I was like, it doesn't make sense. You know? <laughs> Right, so it wasn't really a rebellious thing. I mean, it was really a legitimate. Yeah, it just doesn't, it make, doesn't sense. make sense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, you can kind of go and say, "Well, it doesn't have to make sense," but that's not a good argument, right? Because, I mean, a lot of stuff doesn't make sense. It doesn't mean you have to believe it. Yeah. You know, so why that one thing, or you know, any, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I got it. Yeah. So my my whole family is still like really about it and. I'm kind of like the black sheep guy. Yeah. But, um, but they, I mean, they're, so they're real serious about it. So I was kind of like, uh, ingrained with this thirst for trying to figure out, you know, that sort of stuff, but just without the, the answer of Christianity. Yeah. So I guess, um, yeah, I was, I was kind of going around between a lot of different things for a while, but it, the meditations just held out longer than anything else. And it's, it's just secular. You do that daily? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the morning, I'll do is it. Is that what you would call TM? I mean, is that, what's that, tran- know, Transcendental yeah. medita- Meditation? Is that what that's called? Yeah, Transcendental. I think that it is, involves mantras, for like repeating mantras, but so I don't do that. I call it, um... You just kind of vip- free your mind vip- for... It's a Vipassana meditation, which is uh, mindfulness translation. Okay. So Vipassana is... You choose something. It could be a mantra. You just choose something and you um, observe it. Like the most common is probably the breath. So that's, right. what, that's what I do. Just I just sit down, or I could be walking. You can you do anything you want. Like right now, I could I could do it or whatever. You just um, but anyway, you would, I'll just sit down and observe my breath, and inevitably you start thinking about something else. Like you could sit down right now. Right, and a lot of people say you try that's to, not supposed to happen, but you have to let that stuff in, right? You I mean, can't stop part. it. You yeah, can't. You can't. It's impossible to control your mind. Yeah. Um, but anyway, if you were to like sit down and try to pay attention to your breath for two, like, in and outs, you know, you couldn't do it. Yeah. Unless you had been meditating, like, practicing for, you know, I don't know, at least a few months. But it's amazing, like, <laughs> how your mind just goes, like, Phew! And then you'll even know your mind is gone. Yeah. You're just lost in that thought. So what happens is you sit down, you observe maybe your breath or something, and your mind goes. And then once you notice it's gone, the thinking about something, you just kind of go back to observing the breath. And you don't like, you don't want to condemn yourself. Like, oh man, you should have been focusing on your. Right. You just restart and you you keep going. It's just like, whatever, we're back. Yeah. And, and I mean, I meditate too, so I know what you're talking oh, about. Yeah. I'm just trying to explain it for other people here. But um, so what sort of stuff do you do? Just same type of thing. I mean, just uh, breath is the biggest thing. But um, you know, even just focusing on a picture, and you know, starting on the edge of a picture and just kind of going around the outer edges and working your way into the center. And it's it's anything that just kind of occupies your mind and takes away all that external stress and all those external thoughts that are kind of weighing you down and and um, and uh, giving you that angst and giving you that anger and giving you um, sadness or whatever, just something that can free your mind from those outside thoughts that are causing, I don't know, damage, I guess, maybe is a good word for it, or... I think you're just getting tangled <clears throat> up in them. Yeah, so anything, whether it be just focusing on a, on a light or focusing on a picture, like I said, and kind of dialing yourself in or focusing on that breath. Um, mantras, I mean, that's kind of yeah. the whole thing with uh, scripture, you know, in church and um, um, hymns and all those types of things. Those are types of meditation. Those yeah. are types of 
uh, kind of break in your mind. For I you. can understand those aspects of the church. Stuff, right. You know, so I think it all kind of ties in a little bit to those mm-hmm. mantras, those chants, to yeah, whatever. And in a certain way, your breath is a mantra. It's just kind of repeating. It's just nice because it doesn't stop. You know, you yeah. can't. But most people don't focus on it, though. I mean, that's the key yeah. thing. Yeah. Is it, you, take, you take it for granted, I guess, but the breath yeah. is life. Yeah, and it's just always kind of going there. And But, um, yeah, I think there's something about sitting there and I think you're, you're yourself or your whatever you are, like it needs some time where you're paying attention to it. So if you're running around all day doing stuff and, you know, you're kind of all, all wound up in relationships and doing all kinds of things, maybe you're not paying attention to yourself enough and you get unhappy in certain ways, you get mad or, you know, whatever it is, sad. Yeah. And then but if, I find if you can sit down and just pay attention to yourself for a few minutes, even just five minutes of meditating or in some way, that's what you need. Your, your yourself needs like, <clears throat> hey, man, I'm here. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like a reboot, like a, yeah. a shutdown, defrag. Yeah, it's like these are the things. Reboot. That, yeah. These are the things that are going on in my mind. Like I'm still thinking about like, how I owe this guy a hundred bucks or whatever. So yeah. as long as you sit down and think, like, oh yeah, you know, this is going on, and your your body or yourself or whatever is like, okay, you know, as long as I got, as long as, long as I'm being heard out, you know, we can take care of all this stuff. Yeah. But yeah, because it's like um, I don't know. I, th- I think. Um, a lot of times people are trying to ignore themselves. Like if you watch a movie, you're not really paying attention to yourself. You're just kind of sitting there. But if you weren't watching the movie, some people might be like, what do I do? What I do think I do? Pe- people are afraid to be alone with their thoughts. I mean, that's the key thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because people are afraid of that. And I think it's really important. Yeah. Or else you just get lost and tangled up in your thoughts. Right. And they can go and they can go places. Now, do you have a place that you, I'm looking at the time here. We're an hour and six minutes in right now. Time just goes by so fast. Um, do you have a place that you actually go? I mean, do you just do meditate anywhere you are? Or do you have an actual room you go sit in and, yeah. and do it and the time of day and all that kind of stuff? Or? Yeah, I got a room. It's well, in my room. Um, I do it right when I wake up. Or I walk around for five minutes and then sit down. And um, I'll do that every day. But if I'm feeling good and I'm in like a, a pretty good... Uh, uh, disciplined state of mind, I'll do it at night too. You know, after uh, maybe my kids go to bed, right. I'll just sit down. And uh, the nighttime, sometimes I go on for a long time. Like um, in the morning, I'll do 15 or 20 minutes. But um, I've had a few times, maybe, I don't know, maybe seven or eight times I was on like an hour at night just and just kind of get locked into a, right. something. Well, I think that's what a lot of people think too. Is you have to, you know, if you oh, I can't, I don't have time to meditate because they think it does take a half an hour, an hour, or something. But yeah, you can do five minutes easily. Oh right? yeah, I mean anything beyond like twenty or so is like really, yeah. it's getting there. Right. You know? Well, I know you said you listened to before the podcast. We talked about some uh, some podcasts and stuff, but we talked about Joe Rogan. So, you ever done the float tank that he talks about? <laughs> that sounds interesting though. It's, oh, it's phenomenal. You did it? Oh uh, yeah, we got one over in Mount Pleasant. I've been over there multiple oh. times. So if you haven't tried it, man, yeah. if you're into meditation and... Um, I mean, I used to do like psychedelics and stuff, so I know how things yeah. can get. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. That's interesting because you just like instantly uh, get dropped into <laughs> that, uh, you know, the like the nothingness or whatever. Um, no, it took me probably, you know, Joe talks about it too, but it, it took me probably at least two times before I relaxed enough. And I've been in martial arts since I was 15. So I've been into this meditation. I've been into Buddhism and Taoism and all this stuff for a long time. Um, but when I first got into the tank, it's just a different environment. And it took me forever to, uh, to calm my mind enough to, to actually relax in there and, and get a benefit from it. So the first couple times... I started off doing uh, sixty-minute uh, sessions, sessions, and the first two that I did, I really didn't feel like I got much out of it. It was just a lot of uh, um, waking myself up and, and not relaxing and worrying too much about my position in the water and just I don't know all kind of things. I my brain was spinning just from being there, yeah, um, and overthinking just the process of even just being there. So. Probably my third time, 
I decided to bump it up to an hour and a half, and I think that's my sweet spot is doing 90 minutes at a time. That really gives me enough time to really dive deep into mm-hmm. um, meditation or uh, a psychedelic experience or whatever. So it's phenomenal. It's it's not cheap. I mean, it's just yeah. like going to get a massage or anything else. You're going to pay yeah. pretty much by the minute. So a 60-minute float is about 60 bucks. So, um, But it is fantastic. And, yeah, if you can go – I've never gone in there – on a psychedelic, but you know, I've gone in there on weed a couple of times and it just magnified it tenfold, you know, yeah, going in on something like that. So, cause it just helps you really relax and dive into it. But if you haven't tried it, at least try it. I should try it once at least. I would say twice. Cause the, fir- twice the first, the first time, or three times probably, or maybe three or minimum. Yeah. Four. At least two. Cause I, I think the first time you just really don't know what you're getting into and, and, 60 minutes goes by and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I screwed it up. I yeah. couldn't I couldn't really relax and I couldn't get into it. And then yeah. the second time, you kind of know a little bit better what you're supposed to do or what you should do. Mm-hmm. And I guess nothing's wrong, but... Yeah, I mean, maybe the times you were not relaxed or whatever you thought, you were just really processing a lot of stuff in your head. You, you yeah. did work some stuff out, you know. Right, true. And I guess the biggest thing, too, and I hate to make this all about me now, but... <laughs> it's a conversation. But, yeah, but the biggest thing was, you know... the. When you go in there, they give you these um, little wax uh, ear things that you put in your ears because you don't want the salt water. Because you're laying back, your ears are underneath the water. So you don't want oh, the, yeah. the water going into your ears. So they give you these ear earplugs that you put in. And just like we got these headphones on or if you put earbuds in, you can just hear the inside of your head so much more. Like your heartbeat, yeah. your breathing, everything just becomes amplified for some reason. So that first time I got in the water... It's completely quiet. It's completely dark. I mean, there's nothing. The, the water temperature is the temperature of your body. So it's all just pristine, but you can hear your breath, like amplified, like I said, times 10. Yeah. You can hear your heartbeat beating. And I couldn't drown out those sounds. And what I have what I realized eventually was you have to embrace those sounds and you have to make those sounds part of the experience. So yeah, um, that's why it took me like three times to kind of get past that. I think it was the earplugs was what made the biggest difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it sounds like it could drive you crazy if you weren't really uh, yeah. doing it right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, you know, it's it's like you're trying to go to sleep, but you just keep hearing this somebody breathing in your ear or something, oh. you know. So it's, <laughs> you had to kind of drown out your own breath to, to relax and get into the zone. Yeah. But, but, yeah, if you haven't tried this place called Glow Spa over in Mount Pleasant. Glow Spa, okay. They do regular massage, plus they do the float tanks. I think they... They have two over there right now. I think they were thinking about putting a third one in there. They do facials and some other stuff too. Ooh, I'm not get a facial in the um, yeah <laughs> the tank. But it's it's an experience, man. It's real fun. And these tanks aren't like the ones that they show. If you've watched some of the videos on flota- flotation devices, um, you know they some of them look like a little spaceship, like a little pod or something. But this is oh. like a an actual room. I mean, it's probably I don't know the middle of this couch. Over to us, and then back to the door. That's how, how deep much space. Is it? Is it like a pool? You're in a pool? No, it's like uh, six or eight inches deep. I mean, you're just oh. eight hundred to a thousand pounds of Epsom salt in there, and you're just floating in this very shallow pool of water. I mean, there's no chance you're going to drown or anything. You know, people get claustrophobic and they they think they're going to drown. You know, if they go to sleep, they're going to flip over and drown in yeah. the water. But it, it's not going to happen. I mean, yeah. it's very very shallow. And there's a door. You know, you can pop the door open and get out anytime you want to get out. But it's fantastic. I'd recommend it to anybody. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. But it costs a little bit. Yep. So, well, what else, man? You got anything else you want to talk about? We're mi- we're an hour and 13 minutes in. Yeah. Um, We've talked about most things I wanted to talk about. Uh, was there anything you wanted to bring up? Anything you had on your mind? Any shows you got coming up? Anything you want to promote? Yeah, we're doing a lot of promoting. I don't know. Um, or do we want to get into a couple stuff. tunes? I can't really think of anything. I can play a couple songs. We'll do that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to pause for the cause and um, figure out what uh, where you're going to set up, what you're going to do, and we'll restart. How about that? Take a bat potty break if you need to, whatever. All right. All right. All right. And we're back. You ready, Roger? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, we're going to have Roger play a couple tunes here. 
Couple? Three. How many are you going to do? Um, I'm not sure. We'll do two to start. All right. At least two, so I'll let you take it away. All right, yeah. This first song is called um, Realizing Orange. Both verses right around when my wife was leaving, like it was like a really like high tension, dramatic kind of time, and right. it's just one of the songs that just kind of I don't even know, you know. Excellent. What's well, the name like, of it? All at once, like realizing orange. It's the it's the first song on the album I have on Spotify and iTunes called um, "How Could I Forget." Okay, Spotify. Like, yeah, and it's really the last. That's the last like full album. How uh, could I forget? Those How could I forget? It's kind of about like how could I forget like the person I was because it kind of lost myself in the whole uh, thing. Right. No, understandable. Um, let's see. Probably what I would do is probably just pull this. What part the way? Not to there. Probably perfect. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to get at least one more. 
Yeah, um, let me think about what I was going to play. I had a... Oh yeah, okay, I'll just, uh, I'll just play one of my uh, first songs or that had words in it. And, um, when I first started, they really tried to make um, shorter songs with words. And I was living down in Charleston. And uh, there was this, um, I can't remember what it was called. There's this restaurant somewhere down on like Spring Street. Um, it had, uh, the, it was advertising world famous bean pies. And I was like, man, I'm going to go get a bean pie. And then <laughs> I was just, I kind of procrastinated. <laughs> and I kept procrastinating. And eventually they closed down. So I never got to get the bean pie. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I wrote the bean pie. This song's called the Bean Pie Blues. All right. Awesome. Who put these thoughts in my brain? Who always walks through my ring? I don't really care. Who lives up there? Shut it off, cause I'm insane. Who put these rocks in my shoes? Who stuck the socks in my boots? I don't really care. Who put them there? Just take them away because I'm bruised. Who put this gum on my stairs? Who stuck their thumb in my hair? I don't really care. Who put them there? Just like for you to be aware. Who put this dream in my soup? Who's gasoline's in my juice? I don't really care. Who put it there? To stop this war and call a truce. Who put this fool in charge of me? Who wrote the rules that I see? I don't really care. Who put them there? Let's just do away with them and let's be free. in my throat Who put the words in my throat I don't really care Who put them there Lord, take them away before I choke Alright, yeah Alright, outstanding I like that Thanks So let me ask you this Are either one of those songs now part of Blue Ricky? I mean, do you punk those out uh, at all? No, Can you no. do that? We could, maybe. Maybe that one would be a good punk song. Yeah. Because that song I do kind of play about five different ways. It's kind of changed because it's such an older song. Right. Yeah, it sounds like you could, could punk that out, I think. And yeah, it's do it real fast. Yeah. I mean, we are we do have so, a Bob Dylan song we cover. <clears throat> what is, which one? Uh, Girl from the North Country. Okay. It's just, we just make it real fast. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, that's a good idea. All right, well, I'll try and try. Maybe we'll do that and we'll have have a little uh, influence in the whole thing. All right, cool. Um, I don't know. Let's see. What else can I do? Um, I think we've got time for one more. We're about at 125. All right. I'll do a little quick song then. This one's called um, Looking Through the Window. It's about being kind of like feeling like you're... Like, uh, not fitting in and stuff. That old thing. Okay. At the edge of town I just can't fit in the middle When I sit and think about it My head falls in a puddle But I don't stay tangled I just let go Let go Let go Let go At the edge of town Where I found my 
eyes have bleeding And the cells are running Pounded hard But my heart kept beating That was the song Leaving It said let go Let go Let go Let go Good man. Thanks. Appreciate I think it. I enjoy it uh, way stripped down. I mean that's that's really nice. I mean I've heard it plugged in, you know, at home grown uh-huh. a few times, but cool. yeah, super stripped down, man. It's really nice. I mean, it's all good. Yeah, I mean I like to just do all kinds of stuff. So yeah, not. But stuff. yeah, I, I try speeding a couple of those up, man. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, the bean pack would base. be a good one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, I appreciate you coming over. Yeah. I'm sorry it took us so long to get together. I hope it was yeah. all right once we finally did. Yeah. And I uh, appreciate the music, as always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been a great. We'll see you uh, soon at Homegrown, right? You're booked. Uh, yeah, it's on, I think, next month, uh, third Thursday, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I'll probably be there anyway. Yeah. All right, Roger, man. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Right, we'll talk to you soon.